Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. And today I'm gonna to show you a pretty simple Unify Access single door solution. So basically we're gonna have a Unify Access Hub uh, and we're gonna have that connected to a maglock and a push to release button. And then on the outside, we're gonna have a G2 Pro Reader. So I'll show you what we're putting in, how we wired it up, and then I'll show you some of the uh, configuration. And then finally, I'll go on to my final thoughts. Okay, so let's have a look at the kit. Okay, so let's just quickly run through the kit I'm putting in. I'm on the Unify store and I'm under door access. And the first thing I'm gonna go to is the G2 Reader Pro. So the difference between these two, the G2 Reader Pro has a touch screen on it, which means you have a doorbell, you can put a pin in. It's also got a camera on it and a microphone. So uh, you're able to have a sort of two way conversation with people as well. Okay, so let's select that. It comes in white or black. As I said, you can use the NFC card. You can also use the Unify Identity mobile app. Um, you can uh, put a pin in, and uh, this connects via PoE to the Access Hub. Okay, so the next bit we've got is the Access Hub. Now, you've also got the Enterprise Access Hub. This is for a multiple uh, reader or multiple door um, deployment. We're just going to be doing a single door here, so we've just got the access hub. Just click on this one. Um, this has got lots and lots of terminals on it, so we're going to be using the ones for the maglock. So we're going to be powering the maglock uh, straight off the terminal. We're also going to be putting the push to release button in. It gets fed by um, PoE plus plus. Now in the uh, in the um, example here, they're using a switch, but actually we're going to be using a PoE injector because we haven't got a PoE plus plus switch on site. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to use one of these top ports uh, to connect the uh, reader. So it's pretty simple, really. Um, the only other bit kit we got with this is, uh, or Unify kit, is the access card. So um, we're going to be using some of these, and that's just to allow the uh, employees at the company to get in and out of the building using the G2 Pro Reader and these cards. Okay, so we're not actually going to be using a Ubiquiti lock in this installation. Uh, the reason being mainly because we don't need to, and it's pretty expensive. So we're just going to be using this uh, mag lock here. Um, it is 12 or 24 volts, so it's perfectly suitable. And you can use this indoors or outdoors. This is not a monitored uh, lock, so it's unmonitored. But we're able to use this on the uh, access hub. Okay, and this is the push to exit button we're using. It's just a sort of slim line version, um, really quite cheap. And uh, you just need a couple of wires off that and that goes straight into the access hub again. Okay, so here's the access hub here. On the left hand side on the top port there, you can see my feed coming in from the PoE++ injector. And then on the right hand side, we've got another cable which is going to the reader outside. And if you look down here, you can see that we've got the two wires going to the 12 volt maglock. This just still is not quite finished yet. We need to tidy it up a bit, but that's what that's doing. And then on this other side over here, we've got the two wires going to the push to release button. And here's our push to release button. There's the mag lock. Okay, so the door's closed. If we push the button, we can open it. And then if I go outside, we can see the G2 Pro reader here ready for adoption. Okay, and then by the rack, I've got this PoE++ injector, and that's fed by a CAT6A cable, which goes into this 24-port switch here. Just to say we did not put this rack in, it would not look like this if we put this in. It's a bit of a mess. Okay, so I'm on my Dream Machine Special Edition, um, and you can see the access isn't set up, so I'm just going to press Set Up. And then I've got Agree to the Terms of Service, go to Start, and then it's found those devices straight away. So we've got the Hub, and we've got the... Um, G2 Pro, so I'm gonna say adopt. Okay, so we register our cards next. So what we can do is we can grab a card and we can pop it on the reader and then we'll be able to register that. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I registered, I just registered a single card. Um, so now we can say done. Okay, so now basically if we go to the devices here, we're gonna see that both of these are updating. So we'll just wait for those to update. So while we're waiting for that to update, I'll just go to users and you can see that I'm here and I'm active. So that's good. That means that I'm going to be able to uh, register a card to myself. So anytime you want to create a new user, you just press create new user up here. You can put their details in. Um, you can give them employee date, when they started, etc. You can assign them a card 
and do a pin and then there can be access policies which we'll look at in a little, little bit more detail later you can also add them to a group for example if you say had office cleaners or something and you also had uh, sort of regular employees anything like that you can put them into separate groups so that's a really simple way to create new users okay so we're still updating so we'll go down to settings and take a look at some of this so we look in general, we've got security policies first of all. So basically, emergency mode means what's going to happen when your emergency uh, systems kick in. So this will be fire. Um, now, I've not linked the fire system or a fire system to this, but if you did have a fire system, you can put it into the hub and essentially you're telling it what it's going to do in that situation. So ideally, you want everyone out. So you're going to click evacuation and basically that's going to unlock all the doors so everyone can get out. They're not going to get held in by the uh, mag locks. So that's what that bit is for there. You can also allow for third party NFC cards if you want to. You can change your pin so it's more secure. Make it eight digits for whatever you want to do. Randomize the key keypad layout just to uh, make sure that people can't sort of look at the smudge marks from fingers on the keypad and work it out. Um, and you can also allow a simple pin um, so that means if people have done things like one, two, three, four, you're allowing that. I'd probably turn that off, to be honest. You want something a little bit more complicated without repeated numbers. Okay, so we go to updates next. You can just do this if you want yours automatically updated. Backups, where you're going to back up them, uh, you can download it or you can uh, go to console settings and do ensure you've got your cloud backups created. So we go to advance, we're going to look at our time for max. A little bit about which network it's running on, call duration, um, yeah, recording, uh, door unlocking. So actually you could put that in. So you say, actually, I'm going to do a uh, video and a video and audio every time that door is unlocked. So you can literally see what happened uh, when the door unlocked, who unlocked it on every single occasion. Now that might be really useful if you've got a door that isn't used very frequently. Obviously, if you've got a door that's used like hundreds of times a day, then this is going to get a bit irritating. You get loads and loads of recordings. But if you're really conscious of security on a particular door, then you can put that in. Recording, uh, recording retention, you can change if you want to. I would just leave it auto. Obviously, the bigger the hard drive you've got, the more of that data you're going to be able to uh, store. Entry greeting, you can do your welcome and then their name if you want to. You can change it to hello, hi, whatever you want. You can turn it off. Um, so it could be full name or you could just say welcome without saying anything. Um, uh, exit greeting, you can just say see you, bye, and then their name or you can say none or you can turn it off. I think that this is a bit irritating actually. It's okay like occasionally, but if you've got doors, especially internal doors that are being used all the time, this is pretty irritating. We were doing installation once where they had it on about eight doors and you could just hear it going off constantly. So we turned it off because it was so irritating, but we left it on at the front door. Okay, so you can do some integration here on uh, with APIs. Um, I'm not gonna get into that at this time. Okay, so we've got the policies and schedules. This is what I was talking about earlier. So you can start to create some policies within your site. So if we go to create new one, we can give it a name. So if I just say YouTube, um, and we're gonna give it an all locations, we're gonna select the user, we'll just select myself, uh, but we could do user groups or we could do you know specifically users. Schedule, we can have as uh, always, or we can do a custom time. So we could say actually it's just gonna be between nine to five in office hours, but I'm just gonna leave that as always for now. We're gonna create that. Uh, and then we've got uh, that set up. Obviously at the moment, we haven't done anything with the lock. So we haven't got multiple locks. So that's just, uh, that will need a little bit of tweaking once we've got more in place. Uh, schedules is basically just what's happening with the, uh, the timings. So as we just saw, you can add a schedule here and then you can put that into your policies. Okay, so we go to card inventory and basically see the card number the card type and who it's assigned to. So obviously at the moment we've only got one card, but if we're having loads and loads of cards, you can see exactly which card is assigned to which one. What I'd say about the unified cards is they're not very uh, distinguishable. They just literally look like a unified card. So it's quite good to put some sort of label on them or write on them in some way so you can identify them other than just from these uh, little codes because it's, yeah, it gets a bit difficult that. Okay, let's go to visitors. Um, 
So if you've got people that are coming in, but you just want to give them temporary access, for example, you can create a new visitor. Let's just give them the name of YouTube. Uh, YouTube, YouTube. Um, so come in, you can give them a reason for that if you want to. Um, I'm just going to leave that as interview. Um, and you can give them who they're visiting, the phone number, email, all the other details there. One time visit, recurring visit, etc. When they're going to visit, which location they're going to visit to. So obviously we've only got the one panel at the moment, so you can give them access to that. And then credentials, you probably in this case just give them a pin. So you can say, right, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a four-digit pin. When you come for your interview, put this pin in. As long as you come in this time, you'll be allowed in once. Obviously, if they go out and try to get back in, then they're probably not going to be able to get back in. So um, it is just going to be uh, for that single use. But you can change that if you've got it recurring in. And obviously, you can just delete this. You can manage this quite easily from inside uh, your control panel here. Okay, so that is pretty much everything I want to show you here. I'm not going into that in too much detail. It's much easier to kind of show you this stuff and we've got lots and lots of users which we haven't got at the moment so um you get the idea hopefully right so let's go back to our devices so we've got our door um our, our hub here so we can just have a quick look at this so if i first of all let's just do the click to unlock and i should be able to hear the mag lock in fact i'll put the mag lock on because it's not on so i've put the mag lock on and that has released the uh, maglock, and you might have just heard the reader there saying welcome. Okay, and that's locked it again. I'll put the maglock back on. <sighs> okay, let's just go across to insights. This just gives you a bit of activity about what's happened, how many unlocks you've had, those kind of times. This is quite useful, I suppose, if you can just see when your uh, door's most busy. So we go to settings and pay your device. We can power cycle that because we've got a uh, POE coming straight off that um, hub. And we can also manage that if we want to forget that device, we forget it here. Okay, door attendance. What I've done is just, rather than me describe it, I've just pulled it up on the Unify Access door attendant bit here. So basically this is what a door attendant does. It receives doorbell notifications, um, access live view, and monitors the door, uh, door status in real time. So it just gives them a little bit more control, basically. You might not want all your employees to have this, but if, for example, you're the boss or the office manager or whatever it is, then you might just want a little bit more of information. Um, also, uh, you can do this to certain doors. So you might want to do it if you've got a place with lots of doors. Some, some person's got responsibility for one, another person's got responsibility for another, etc. Let's go back to this. Okay, unlock schedule, again, you can put that in if you want to. Um, might be useful in certain scenarios. And then we've got the usual stuff you get with uh, unified devices. Right, let's go back to overview, and then we'll go to terminal manager. So terminal manager basically just shows you the ports uh, like you would get on a switch in unified uh, network. So it's showing you where the connection's coming in. So that's our internet connection and our uplink. And then we've got a PoE out to a uh, access control. You might have another access control keypad on this, or uh, you might have a camera on here. So it will basically list it all here and tell you exactly what's what, and you can just give it a power cycle if for any reason you need to. Okay, so terminals basically just shows you what does what. So for example, you can motion, close active to open active, etc. You can have a button that unlocks the door or rings the chime. Um, so on so on this is again about that emergency and emergency what happens to the door goes to lockdown you can activate evacuation mode for all doors um, so this is basically where you're controlling those terminals that are going to the locks and buttons and all the other bits and pieces there so that's what you do in the terminals bit okay so let's go back to our devices okay so we've got door entry so this is the g2 pro we're going to click on that Okay, so an intercom viewer is basically just the screen that allows you to interact with this. So if someone rings, then it comes up on the screen and then you can let them in and speak to them on that screen. So that's all an intercom viewer is. That is a separate device that would obviously sit at like a reception area or something like that. This is just a live view of the intercom itself. You can have a look. You can it tell you the status. It's locked at the moment. You can click to unlock that again. It's unlocked it. Um, and you can talk if you wish to. Um, obviously, I've turned that off at the moment. You can go full screen. So that is what the uh, clicking on that does. And just to, it gives you a little bit of information about here, what it's connected to, etc. Okay, so if we go to settings, so we can give it a name. So I might want to give it that front door, something like that. If we go to uh, 
yeah, which side it's on essentially. So are we coming in or out with this? So the G2 reader in this case will be on the entry, not on the exit. But you might have a, like a G2 Pro and then a, just a standard G2 reader on this side. So they're coming out on that one. So you know which way is which. And that just helps you get uh, sort of track your information, etc. Okay, Intercom Viewer Manager, that just essentially allows you to manage who is viewing that Intercom. So access methods, we've got the NFC card, mobile button. You might want to do a pin as well. So that means you can unlock it on the phone. So that's only going to be authorized people. Um, doorbell trigger, we swipe to call. So that means basically pull that button up and that rings it. Which I'll show you in a moment. You can hold to call or you can disable it. I don't know why you disable it, but that's an option as well. Video recording, you've got motion detection on it, so that's going to go to your hard drive. You have to have a hard drive installed on whichever device you're using here. So um, you could be using a, uh, you know, like I am a Dream Machine, or you might be using an MVR. Status lights, welcome flashlight, so that just lights up so people uh, are sort of seen or it recognizes that they're seen when they approach the door. Um, and then you've got a bit about display brightness, etc., etc., um, and the volume, and just the usual stuff there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So the the big work from this is going to come from your adding your users, getting all your policies in, deciding what you want to get done in the office or wherever it is that you're installing this system. This is where the work goes on, and it's really administrator role that that is not a sort of initial setup. That's going to be someone that needs to be responsible for keeping this all up to date, making sure people can get in and out, arranging times, uh, you know, pins and stuff for people that are coming in on a short term basis. So there is a lot of work involved in this bit. But for this initial setup, that's not really required. Okay, so that was the setup of the Unify Access on a single door with the mag lock there and a the push to release button with the one reader. So all pretty simple. Um, what I would say is Unify Access is a great system. I really like it actually. It's very simple to use, very simple to administer, and it's relatively cheap. If you start putting in lots and lots of the readers, um, especially the G2 Pros and the viewers, then it does start to add up. But for kind of single door solutions like this, or if you're just gonna be doing a few readers on one of the enterprise hubs, then it is a really nice solution and I would recommend it. I'm also gonna be doing a video on the Intercom soon because that is another step in the Unify Access, which I think is gonna be extremely popular. We are already getting lots and lots of people asking about that, and that's not even out in the UK yet. So look out for that video soon. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.